Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Got some very interesting news coming out of Israel right now about the United States. It's a report on Arut Shiva, IsraelNationalNews.com. The article is entitled, EMP Nuclear Attack Fears Have U.S. Reopen Cheyenne Mountain. According to the article that came out today, it says the Pentagon has decided to reopen the Cheyenne Mountain Air Defense Facility, which housed the heart of America's air and missile defense of North America. The facility had been uh, mothballed in a cost-saving move in 2006. Well, I guess you can imagine who did that. That's when uh, uh, Barack Obama, President Obama, was actually uh, downgrading the U.S. military, making it much easier for the enemies to attack the, the U.S. But anyway, the article goes on to, to read, Last week, Admiral William Gortney, head of the U.S. NORAD, that's North American Aerospace uh, Defense Command, and U.S. Northern Command reversed that decision and announced the Pentagon was spending an opening ante of $700 million to oversee the reactivation of Cheyenne Mountain Embedded Facility. Uh, the reason the Pentagon's fears of a nuclear electronic magnetic pulse, an EMP attack by... Uh, a missile that would burn out America's overly dependent defense, uh, which is based on modern electronics. Uh, the U.S. NORAD and U.S. Northern Command aren't just uh, acronyms. They represent that uh, the last-ditch American defense of the continental United States homeland. Uh, NORAD originally stood for North American Air Defense Command, but now stands uh, for North American Aerospace Command. Interesting. Uh, U.S. North, uh, Northern Command is the area-specific des uh, designation of the U.S. military command that is responsible for the continental United States homeland given the, the current U.S. military fear of intercontinental ballistic or ICBMs uh, missiles attack with an EMP nuclear device, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the interest that I have in this now, of course, Israel is bringing this out because of the negotiations the United States is doing with Iran and knowing that Iran has vowed not only to wipe Israel off the face of the map, they've also uh, said that they would strike the United States as well in times past. So it's interesting. Uh, they're wanting to bring this to the world's attention that the U.S. is, is making this uh, bold move, fearing of a nuclear attack. Uh, but if you really begin to follow what's going on, there's other news also going on around the world that will let you know exactly why the United States is doing this. And another article that's on TASS uh, news agency, uh, coming out of the Russian news agency, they're reporting that uh, just recently a Russian Su-27 fighter jet forced a U.S. spy plane to alter its course, uh, on the uh, according to the defense ministry in Russia. On April 11th, Moscow uh, reported that U.S. reconnaissance plane, the RC-135U, was heading towards Russia's state border and Russian Su-27 fighter jet made it change its course. The Russian Defense Ministry officially spokesman told reporters on Saturday. Uh, the incident occurred on April the 7th when the Russian Air Defense Forces on duty found an unknown air target over the Baltic Sea that was moving towards the Russian state border, General Major uh, Igor uh, Konshinko said. The Su-27 fighter jet approached um, the unknown plane and flew around it several times and identified it as the RC-135U reconnaissance plane of the U.S. Air Force and reported to the command about the incident. He said the U.S. plane changed its course and flew away from the Russian border. Uh, Konashinko, Shinkov, excuse me, said he stressed that during the spy plane's flight, the transponder was turned off. Of course, that's something that Russia does as well, uh, according to the Western reports, uh, especially around Europe, uh, and even in the United States where they have flown down uh, towards the, uh, the eastern coast of the United States. Uh, so a lot of this cat and mouse games are being played, but then again, it's more than just cat and mouse. You have to remember, Ukraine is still a boiling point right now, and even Canada is now sending in military uh, 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 soldiers into Ukraine. Now, they say they're not for combat, 
but for training purposes right now and said that they would be joining American forces that are already in the region. So Russia knows the United States is there. Uh, that was a, an article that came out on, uh, I believe it was the Moscow Times, and it, the tensions are certainly building. They're building to a boiling point, quite frankly. And uh, it's only a matter of time before something goes to blows. Uh, and another interesting article as well, and this is to kind of follow up on the news. As we mentioned to you in the news earlier today, we were speaking about how that the, uh, the Palestinian police will be taking over certain areas uh, in and around Jerusalem. They're be being given uh, controlled armed police, that is. Armed Palestinian police are taking charge of Judea and Samaria. And as I said to you, this is certainly uh, a, a, maybe an easy way to let the Israelis know that things are changing and we're going to see a biblical uh, ramifications from all of this. We're going to see M uh, Micah chapter 4 come into play where uh, the Jewish people, the daughter of Zion, shall be taken out of the city, out of the city of Jerusalem, and will dwell in the fields. But another article came out today on Israel National News, and it says here, Abbas to sign accords with Putin in Moscow. Uh, the peace talks, economic investment, and trade to highlight meeting between Abbas and Russian President uh, in the Kremlin. This is coming up, a, a trip that Abbas is doing there. But notice what the article points out. It says, Russian President Vladimir Putin will meet uh, Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas in Moscow on Monday where the issues of the Middle East peace talks will be raised. Russian authorities announced Thursday the two leaders will hold talks concerning key aspects of Russian-Palestinian relations and their future with particular attention to trade, excuse me, on trade, economy, and humanitarian sectors, uh, the Kremlin said in a statement according to the AFP. There will also be an exchange of ideas of the process of Israeli-Palestinian talks and other problematic re regional situation. The statement continued, adding that North Africa would also be on the agenda. It's, it gets very interesting to see the diplomatic uh, relations that are being built here with, with Moscow. Uh, Abbas is also scheduled to meet with Russian uh, Prime Minister uh, Dmitry Med Medve Medvedev, on Monday to discuss economic and investment issues. Uh, PA uh, uh, Ambassador to Moscow, Fayed Mustafa, said Abbas would sign several intergovernment accords during his three-day visit to Russia. And there's more information on that. You can check that out on our uh, Facebook page, Israeli News Live on Facebook, and follow up on this article as well. But clearly, and we're also talking about, uh, oh, and by the way, one other point that's really interesting, they're going to sign a deal with Russia, the Palestinian uh, administration there, is signing a deal with Russia for a massive one billion natural gas project. Uh, that is being signed in Gaza with the PA last January, or was signed last January during a similar visit by Abbas. So what is on the table now? Who, who can only say? So... Uh, it's, it's clear that the Palestinian Authority is moving forward in, in their uh, respective way of, of claiming their part of a two-state solution. I'm Stephen Benoon, and I'm sad to have to report this type of news. Good evening.